So anyway, I was talking about the the record collection. Yeah, you had twenty thousand because you had two, those two times. Two so times. I had collected up to twenty thousand, and the first collection I had a whole bunch of really collectible stuff. This was back in the um, uh, mid '80s when I first started realizing that um, there were all these wonderful RCA living stereos and Mercury living presents and Decca's and so on. And every spare cent I had, I, I would buy one or two of these records. And I used to buy them from a whole bunch of different people, including uh, Chad from Acoustic Sounds. Uh, I would order it and he would ship it. And they were all reasonably priced then. Oh, they were crazy money back then. Because back then, they were they were highly collectible. There, there were no remasters, no new pressings, and so on. So you bought what you bought. Um, but what I mean to say is, like, for instance, uh, I got Niger to go buy me a Nella Fitzgerald record because he went down to a store downtown in yeah. um, downtown Toronto, and he picked it up. It was a hundred bucks, you know, mono, but forty-five RPM. Yeah. I really wanted it, yeah. and then he says, "Oh, there's this other thing here. It's a it's the Beatles Mono Masters re-release three three LPs, and it's also a hundred dollars." I said, "Are you still at the store? Go pick it up for me." <laughs> and he says, "No, I left." And fortunately, he didn't pick it up because when I went through my record collection and was putting it in all the cabinets. I found one I bought not that long ago. I forgot I bought it and I paid much less than $100. Yeah. So, so now now I'm discovering that I have duplicates of lots of records yeah. and that's never a good thing when yeah. your memory is that that, you know, that fragile <laughs> that you yeah. can't remember. So, so the reason we're talking about this everybody is because Philip just moved. He's in the process well, I mean, in still the, of yeah. settling in. And and of course he's all he's all freaking out to everybody in the store because he's trying to think about placement of everything and how he's going to set up his hi-fi system and all this stuff, and here I am, you know, a voice of reason only because I'm not involved, right? Because if I were moving, I'd be freaking out as well. I'm trying to tell him, think big picture, move out first, move well, into the new space, then worry about where you're going to set up. He's, and he, here he is, he's drawing to like the millimeter where the speakers are going to be and so on. See, and I say to him, you haven't even moved in and you got to move in first. Then So I'm 75% everything. moved, okay? 75% I'm, I'm moved. After a month. Yes. Well, there was a lot of stuff. And and and, and the issue is, even though my, my new place is fairly big, um, it's on two levels, um, but, you know, everything occupies a lot of space. So if you don't pack, like unpack and put it away, yeah. it's going to be in the middle of your floor. Oh, for sure, for sure. So I managed to go through, uh, like, I don't know, 10 boxes of records plus 20 bags of records. And the, my cabinet, the, my main cabinet's only... 75% full, and I still have 45 boxes of records to go through. And, and just so, again, to show you his priorities, right? He hasn't unpacked anything else. Just his hi-fi and his records, nothing else. Everything else is still in garbage bags. No, 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 boxes. garbage bags. They're all in boxes. He's a hoarder that had to move. He's oh, my hoarder. God. I put my CDs away, my, too. My, it's, my, it's in the cabinet, the movers, mostly. The movers who are friends of the store, mm. you know, they, uh, um, the the owner of the moving company texted me. He said, he said on the day of the move, he says, I'm going to send an extra guy. So there were already two guys, apparently. He sent the third guy, he says, because this guy has so much stuff. And it's it's on multiple levels. He said, "I'm going to send one extra guy because uh, they, yeah. they won't be able to get through it just with the two guys." Well, they guys. got through it. The three guys it took four hours, <laughs> so, which was better well, than the last time because they yeah. moved the other stuff from my storage yeah. locker. It took ten well, good hours. Good for you. I'm I'm, I'm glad that well, at we're least getting you're almost there. there. We're you're getting there. Seventy five percent. You're supposed and to be fully out by Sunday. No, That's I just give my landlord more money. <laughs> That's not going to happen. You're like my daughter. She she's got this new condo, and and. A whole month goes by before she starts moving in. And I'm thinking to myself, who does this? You have a new condo. <laughs> I do it. You're paying <laughs> I do the it. whole month and you don't take the time to start moving in. And that you, you wait till the next month. Oh, my God. All right. Kids today. Anyway, hi everyone. Adrian from Wadi Excellence Canada, Philip over there. Thank Angus. you for indulging us. <laughs> yes, Angus behind the controls. Um, 
So today, uh, Philip said we should do a video on cables, specifically general ideas like, you know, uh, um, how do you choose cables? What sort of budget? Um, things like this. And I at first thought, oh my God, we're going to do this can of worms. This is this is crazy. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of cables to begin with. And we well, don't actually give do, the secrets away. Yeah, we're going to do this. Philip says, yeah, we should do it because people are always asking. Plus, you said something to me that triggered this this um, this idea for for cables. You said that we had two of our uh, two of our most um, um, hardworking, ardent reps. Yes. So tell them the story. Uh, so you know, we deal with quite a number of people who are our. Um, you and know, they're all sales, generally really, they're, really good. They're all, they're we're, all really we're, knowledgeable. Um, just really good people. We're very lucky. Our reps very, are very great lucky. people. They're great yeah. people. We've been dealing with them for a long time. It's a very small community. Yeah. We get to know them quite well. Yes. And uh, they each, of course, bring a set, different set of strengths and weaknesses. And I would definitely say that the two most ardent, um, most enthusiastic uh, sales salespeople that we deal with are our representative for Nordos Cables. Whose name is Bruno, and then our our representative for for uh, Audio Quest cables, and his name is Fred. Anyways, so yeah. between Bruno and Fred, they're two super enthusiastic, knowledgeable um, uh, people that who actually give me a lot of help. Yeah. You know, because they they have knowledge that I just have no other way of getting uh, unless I start reading tons and tons of white papers. Yeah, which and, I don't and really it's like crazy. to do. Especially think about Fred. Fred Fred is our agent for AudioQuest. AudioQuest has like thousands of SKUs. products, yeah. yeah, SKUs in their range. Thousands. I don't and know. He knows he all keep, of it. I don't know how he keeps on top of it. It's it's crazy. I'll text him a question, and he'll be able to text me back in a few minutes on the you know the answer to this. I I don't know how he keeps. Uh, it drives me crazy, especially when I've complained mm -hmm. about how AudioQuest's names for their products make no sense to me. Maybe to everybody else in the world, but it should be like one, two, three, four, five. But something it's, that makes sense, you know. Like I was just, it's a forest. It's, well, I was talking to a client the other, uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, about cars, and he told me how he had bought this Mercedes a number of years ago, and it was a C to a three. 50, you know, and it's a C is the C class, so you know it's it's the lower range, and the 350 in general usually means it's a 3.5 liter or something along those lines. You you can at except, least know. except now it's like a 2.8 liter with turbochargers. Exactly, or so like that. it all changes now, but but at least it, in the past it used to make sense. Anyway, so let's let's continue. So today we're going to try and cover the broad strokes of cables, um, how you can how you can help yourself in terms of choosing cables and uh, budgeting and things like this. So maybe to start, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Do cables make a difference? Uh, so the, here, here's the irony. Every Friday, we're, we're, we're taping this on a Friday. Taping, my God, you know, who uses tape anymore? We're recording this. We're recording this on a Friday. And of course, every Friday, Audiogon sends an email to me uh, uh, showing the, the most popular topics in their forum. And there are two topics about cables uh, in this latest email. Um, so it's quite ironic. So uh, do cables make a difference was one of the questions. Um, so my personal issues with cables, Philip and I have talked about this, not specifically about cables. We don't necessarily but, agree about this one. That's right. But not, not about cables, but in general about our own personal hangups. Uh, um, as individuals, we... we our limitations oftentimes, well, let's talk about sales in particular. Our limitations oftentimes define what we're capable of doing for our clients. So in other words, if I have a real hang up about, let's say, sources, let's say digital, I don't believe that digital makes any difference whatsoever, as an example. If that were the case, then if a client wants to buy, for him, a really good DAC, you know, my subconscious leaning or my conscious leaning against any differences whatsoever in digital will exhibit in a subconscious manner. My body language will change, the way I talk about it will change. And as a result of that, it will um, affect the client's um, decision about buying what he wants to buy. And this is also true whether it's cars or homes and so on and so forth. Um, so my personal hang-up has been about cables, and, and not just cables, about, a, a, you know, weird accessories and so on. Um, and and I 
oftentimes wonder why that's the case because I hear the differences, but there's still <laughs> a big hang up psychologically. Wait, wait, wait. You hear the differences oh, big time. and you hear the improvements. Yes. And yet I have a real hang up and I'll, I'll go through this very quickly. Um, so I, I, I've often asked myself why that's the case, because if there's one thing that I know about myself, I'm brutally honest um, when I evaluate myself. So why is that the case? And I think part of it is that, uh, um, you know, when, when I was training as an engineer, um, the, the things that were, 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 were sort of uh, uh, pumped into your head all the time is measure, you know, you come up with a hypothesis, you know, you, you, you measure, you do an experiment, you measure, and then you, you, you see if you, can uh, uh, if you can confirm the hypothesis and things like this, right? And so in the early days, stereo review, high fidelity magazines, there's no difference in cables. Cables are cables, right? As long as basically you can measure the LCR, right? The impedance, the resistance, uh, the resistance, the capacitance, and the inductance, it should all basically be the same. So um, to me, that was always been the case. And it's very, very hard to get past that that part of, of my my. But it's initial... like total harmonic distortion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same kind of it's thing. It's a meaningless... Right? The same kind of thing. So um, I remember the very first time where I was forced to uh, uh, come to grips with this face-to-face. The rep for Cardis Cables, I might have told the story, rep for Cardis Cables back in the 80s brought a, 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 a two power cords for me to try. And he says, you got to hear this. And I looked at him and I thought, you're out of your mind. A power cord, six foot worth of power cord. And meanwhile, we have miles of power cable inside the wall that goes to, you know, the the, 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 the station, the substation, and, and then the the... the sub panel and all the stuff and they're all using basic you know cable and here you've got this little six footer and you're telling me it makes a difference and he says to me just try it what's the harm so after he left i thought well fine you know i'm just going to do it just because and so i you know and I, the system at the time set up was something that i knew very very well i unplugged the cables plugged the power cord in that's all i did right uh, turned the system turned the amp back on and my, I literally just was in shock. I mean, <laughs> literally was in shock thinking, no, that can't be. There's no way I'm hearing what I'm hearing. This is, whether or not it sounded better, let's put that aside. There was a ginormous difference, like a huge difference. I was like totally flabbergasted. So I decided I'm going to do this again. Turned it off, put back the regular power cords that came with the Rollins and listened again. And sure enough, everything shrunk. It was like a, a ginormous difference. I was... I was so stunned that that Saturday when my colleague came to work, he only worked part-time back then, I said, we got to do this experiment. So I'm going to close my eyes and you're going to swap the cables, but you won't tell me whether you actually swapped or not. So it was like a single blind test and you're going to record it and we'll do it three, four times. And then I'm going to do it to you. And he hadn't heard this yet, hmm. right? He hadn't done this. Uh, uh, so, so, and I didn't tell him, so I didn't prejudice the experiment. I said, we've got these power cords, let's try it. And we did this. So this is the same guy that uh, we did the uh, green marker CD oh, right, that I right, talked right, about right. in one of the earlier seed, uh, uh, videos. And both of us, and in this case, it was, uh, if I remember correctly, either 100% correct uh, on the trials or very, very close. It was it was completely ridiculous. I, I cannot tell you why there's a difference. To this day, I don't know why there's a difference. So that was the first time I met my maker, so to speak, it blew my mind. <laughs> it just totally. Anyway, so that's that's the elephant, as far as I'm concerned, in the room. Yeah. All right. All right. So what brought this question on for me is that, uh, you know, uh, of course, I've been following some individuals on YouTube. I've been reading lots and lots of articles over the you know last thirty years, um, and there's always an element of some deniers out there who claim it's all snake oil. And of course, the argument always is, have you heard it? Have you listened to it? What are you hearing? Um, and they will always cite to me, oh, well, the measurements don't prove anything. It's like, there's no difference. And then I, well, I, my, my, my reaction always is, but what did you hear? Because the proof is always in what you hear. Now, I understand there's a certain amount of confirmation bias. And so certainly, uh, when I ask people to have an audition, like when, when I ask them to audition something like cables, I try not to say too much because otherwise I don't want to, you know, 
uh, influence their judgment. Um, fast forward, Bruno, our erstwhile Nordos representative, our sales agent there, he said, Philip, I've got a case of Ethernet cables I want you to try. And, and that's where I drew the line. Ethernet cables. Okay, okay. So he sends me some Ethernet cables. And now we're talking about the basic Blue Heaven. The next one up is the Heimdall. And then there's a Valhalla 2. Valhalla 2 is second from the top in their range. The only thing more extravagant would be Odin 2. Or, well, actually, Odin is still available, but, uh, but Odin 2 is considered to be the level above Valhalla 2. And we have Valhalla 2 in here. We have interconnects and speaker cables. Uh, but we haven't tried any of their Ethernet stuff. Now, we do use a Blue Heaven somewhere yep. in our digital setup. Yep. Uh, so let's fast forward again. The case comes, it comes in a Pelican case, and there's like three three meter cables in there. Um, I don't really have time to test it or listen to it. And oh, it's getting on, it's getting on, it's getting on. So we got the beefcake here. And I said, Angus, you're up. Tell me what you hear. And that's what I said to him. Uh, try it, and you, you you give me your impressions. I, I I didn't. I don't think I influenced you, right, Angus? No, no. He's shaking his head. So he went, and and over the course of a half an hour, and this is so. Th Angus is relatively inexperienced about all this stuff. He's, you know, he just hasn't heard been exposed to a lot he's of. He's like it. Jay when Jay joined us. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, so he, you know, Angus is very passionate. He has good ears. He, ha he has very open to. Um, hearing new things and understanding that there might be something better. Um, so yes, there's a certain receptiveness about it. Um, so half an hour comes, passes, and I'm, I'm hearing all this music playing in the other room. He's playing it pretty loud. And then he comes up to me and says, yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, and I said, so what did you think of the Blue Heaven over the stock, you know, generic cable? Oh yeah, it's quite a bit better. And then he, he told me, I, I switched to the Heimdall. It wasn't as 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 much of a difference, maybe 30%. So Mr. Uh, our, our new guy, our, our new guy tells me it's 30% better. How, how can you be that precise? And then he says, and then I tried the Valhalla too. And it was like, oh, oh. And I thought, well, that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good review. I don't have to listen to this cable anymore. <laughs> so the question is, did Angus, when you were listening to these cables, did you know where in the um, um, lineup each of these cables were? In other words, was did you know that the Valhalla was the most expensive versus the Heimdall versus the Blue Heaven? Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? Okay. I was hoping you'd say you didn't because that would actually Well, be there's some giveaways to it because uh, the cables come, uh, the higher up you go, they have better um, uh, caps that they to protect the ends and they have mm -hmm. nicer Velcro and so forth. And, the, you know, uh, the, the Valhalla has, you know, wooden pieces of wood there. I don't know what that, what purpose resonance that serves. Resonance control, supposedly. Is that resonance yeah. control? Yeah, supposedly. Okay, fast forward. I take these cables to a client because he's the kind of guy who actually listens to cables. He was listening to power cables. He had borrowed, oh, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 of power cables. And I heard a system with the power cables in place, and he uses a very good DAC. And um, he uses a 10 you know, from Mola Mola. Uh, the system sounded really fabulous. Uh, so we put the cables in. We only changed the Ethernet cable, kept it very simple. And the Tambaki sounded with the generic cable like nothing. Like it wasn't worth $17,000 Canadian. You know, it didn't sound great. We put the Blue Heaven in and it began to sound great. You could hear all this detail, but it was a little bit mechanical because that system is really, really resolving that he has. We put the Heimdall in, and like, like Angus experienced, it was 30% better, something in that range. It was more refined, same level of detail, but way more refined, it sounded more realistic, like you know there was roundness to things instead of everything being like sharply cut off. And then, of course, we put the Valhalla 2 in, and it's just the world changed. The world changed. And I thought, I have to buy two of these. <laughs> so the funny thing that you guys mentioned about Valhalla, so again, we haven't talked about this. Philip and I never talk about uh, uh, what we're going to say. And by the way, before I forget, if you are enjoying this video, even if you're not, please thumbs up, thumbs down, comment uh, below. It helps the algorithm. Subscribe, turn on the notification, all of those things. Um, so 
I had mentioned, I started this thing off saying that I had this real issue with cables. So back, I want to say now about 10 years ago or so, back when we were still on Bayview Avenue in this uh, older um, uh, century home, uh, our friend Bruno said, okay, Adrian, uh, time to put up or shut up. You need to decide if you want to be a Valhalla dealer. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I don't want to be a Valhalla dealer. This is crazy money for cables. I, I'm very happy selling just a regular. He says, well, I'm going to bring you a set of cables and you're going to listen to it. And then you're going to tell me if you don't want to be a dealer or not. Fine. Okay. So he brings these Valhalla speaker cables and interconnects and so on. And while he wasn't around, so he wouldn't influence me. I connected the Valhalla speaker cables. Now understand, I really, really, really did not want to do this. I really didn't want to spend the money. I really didn't want to hear the differences. I, if I, as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, it makes no difference whatsoever. I'm happy to sell just the regular cables, right? I hooked up the Valhalla cables and again, come to Jesus moment. It's like, yep. oh my God. Yep. Oh my God. I was... I was so upset with myself because now there was no way of going back. I literally had to sit in my office and cogitate for quite a long time before writing the check. I mean, I'm happy with spending money on speakers, on amps and all this kind of stuff, but cables, oh God, I can't do this. I had to do it. I, I couldn't go back. This was, so it's funny how you're talking about the Valhalla and I had the same experience all those years ago. Well, it shouldn't be, right? For a, for an Ethernet cable. <sighs> it's a psychological thing. It's just, you know, what can I tell you? <laughs> anyway, let's move forward because otherwise this will take forever. Right. Um, so I thought maybe we should talk first about one of the ways that you can consider how to do a comparison for yourself because there's a lot of different ways. Um, in my experience, uh, maybe Villab, you can see if you agree or not. Um, when we do demos in the store, one of the things I've discovered, or when I want to hear something, one of the ways that one of the things I've discovered is that if I get somebody else to do the changes for me while I'm sitting passively, I tend to hear better mm -hmm. because I'm not focused on doing something else. I'm more relaxed. There's no blood, extra, you know pressure flooding into my ear canal and my head and so on. And so my mind is still very clear about what I heard previously. So if possible, if you can get some cables to try, um, best to have a friend to help you and, and let them do the switching for you while you remain very passive. What do you think, Villiv? Is that a good good concept? Mm. Or you have no issue with that? You know, I never really thought about that, and I, 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 I think that actually you have quite, quite a good point. Um, you should be, you know, you shouldn't be stressed out doing this. This should be a like a fun kind of, you know, um, you know, uh, activity. I mean, I hate listening to cables and comparing <laughs> cables because because I hear that all the differences, just like you do, and. Um, Generally speaking, the better the cable is or the more expensive it is, you know, the, the better it is. And it means that I have to spend money and I don't really like to do that. Uh, yes, I, you do. Well, <laughs> but I don't like to spend as much as... Which reminds me before, by, by the way, do I, am I still picking up those boxes yeah, for you? Yeah, okay, yeah, remind yeah. me. I have okay. cash for you. Yeah, that, that's fine. But just so you know, I'm going out of the province to do a major install. Nothing and illegal, guess, nothing right. illegal. And guess what I'm told to do by our friend no, no, over no, here. No, 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 no. He says, oh, by the way, since you are in the generic area, we're talking miles and miles Adrian, and miles apart. See, he he says to offered. Me, no, no, I did. He says to me, do, would you mind, as if I could refuse, picking up these ginormous big boxes mm. that have been sent over there to be refurbished so that I can bring them back to him. This is in this place which is already full of his junk, right? Anyway. There's two spots for those speakers. And they, <sighs> they measure perfectly, so I'm going to be okay, fine. Back to, back to the point at hand. So have somebody do the switching for you so this way you are uh, relaxed and focused. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is, uh, this is obvious, listen to music that you're familiar with. However, my suggestion is rather than just listen to music that you're familiar with, pick specific playlists of songs that you would normally use for specific things that you're listening for, if that's the case. So in other words, let's say this particular cut for bass, uh, this particular cut for voice, etc., cetera, and, and do that. But you have to be very familiar with that particular sample. Otherwise, it's it, 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 uh, it may defeat the purpose. Um, now, Villip, typically doesn't do that. Villip listens for an emotional or waits for an emotional response, and which is really, really good too. Um, um, so you can try both and see see uh, what works for you. And then the other thought 
four minutes. Holy moly. Um, the other thought is keep the sample that you're listening to short. In other words, per song, don't listen to necessarily the whole song because your attention will drift. So when uh, I listen to music, I don't yeah. listen to the whole song unless yeah. I'm really you Just know, enjoying captured. It. Yeah. I, but I try to listen to 30 seconds, a minute. Yeah. Because I, I and I'm very 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 familiar with what I'm listening to. Yeah, so so that would be good. Keep your keep your uh, keep the sample short. Typically minute minute and a half for me at, at max. Again, because all we're just doing testing. We're not necessarily listening uh, uh, for enjoyment at this point. Um, do you want to start over? Okay, we'll be right back. A few moments later. So anyway, let's get back. Um, so you're listening to short yes. little snippets. So next thing is budget. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky because as, as, as we all know in life, just because something is more expensive doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Now, a lot of times, if it's a good manufacturer, chances are it is. More expensive is typically better. So there's no hard and fast rule here as far as how much you should budget for as cables go. Um, Having said that, my general rule of thumb is 15 to 20% of the component cost. So in other words, let's say you need a pair of interconnects for your CD player. Does anybody use CD player anymore? Yep, I do. Okay. Uh, or your DAC. And let's say your DAC is $1,000. Budget 150 bucks to 200 bucks for it. Start there. You can always go higher, you can always go lower, but at least this way you know where to sort of start uh, as to um, uh, uh, what kind of interconnects. Uh, if it's a well-designed differential balance design, I always go with balance cables uh, where there's a choice. Um, Philip, anything to add to budget so far? So I did end up selling a elaborate system to a new client. And um, I believe, well, I sold a pair of uh, uh, Macintosh MC901s to him. And I did use the 15 to 20% rule for adding interconnects to his system which he agreed to uh, a little bit reluctantly because, you know, it's, it's a lot of money because that was a pretty expensive system and, and the system sounds great. But we did stick to that 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 formula and it, it worked quite well because that, that meant that I had a budget to work within and I maximized the quality he could get out of that budget. Now, he could have gone higher, but for what he purchased, it worked out perfectly. And well, We were talking yesterday about some of my early... Um, a memory of, of cable. So back again in the mid to late 80s, there was a group of us. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Six of us, uh, um, f five, they were all Vietnamese, Chinese, and I was the only one that wasn't from Vietnam. And all of these wonderful folks were uh, um, just hardworking people who had landed in Canada through the generosity of, of Canadians who sponsored them. You may, some of you older folks may remember back uh, uh, during that time, a lot of Vietnamese were, were escaping Vietnam due to the political unrest and so on. And they would escape uh, by, by, uh, or the boat people. Yeah, yeah. By climbing on these uh, uh, terrible conditioned boats and, and hoping that they would land in Malaysia, anywhere. Uh, and be rescued from the seas. So anyway, uh, these folks arrived in Canada penniless and through very hard work, you know, made something of themselves. And we would congregate every Saturday when they got into Chinatown to, to do their shopping and we would just sit there and talk and, and, and just share experiences about audio and so on. And I remember very clearly, again, just to put this in perspective, you guys know what I think of cables and my issue with cables. <laughs> So let's say, for example, they would have a system that's worth, in total, $10,000, right? Speakers, and so on. They would think nothing about spending five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 on a pair of interconnects. And it used to blow my mind because I'm working just as hard as they are, making the same roughly kind of money, you know, basically minimum wage plus. And they would think nothing about saving like crazy and spending five or $6,000 on interconnects or speaker cables. And, and and hearing all these crazy improvements. And meanwhile, I keep thinking to myself, that's not possible. Uh, you know. And then one day, um, I was at a client's house. And he had bought a digital cable from me and asked me to deliver it and, and, and hook it up from him, for him. And so we could enjoy it together. So I did. And the system, I can't remember the exact system, but it was a nice, well-balanced uh, system. And he had uh, slowly bought each cable 
um, to improve a system. So it start with an interconnect, another interconnect, and then speaker cables. And then the last thing that was uh, to be done was a digital cable. So get to his house. Uh, oh, I remember the system. He had the Apogee uh, calipers with uh, a Krell, integra- uh, Krell power amplifier, Krell preamplifier, and um, I think it was a Meridian CD player that he was using as a transport, and I can't remember the DAC. might have been a PS Audio. Anyway, so uh, only thing that was left was the digital cable. So we listened to what he was already using as a digital cable, which was just a generic 75-ohm coax cable, and then we swapped in this digital cable, which for the life of me, I cannot remember now. And the difference was huge. We're not talking about a minor, huge. Um, and I couldn't understand why one digital cable made that much of a difference. And it really, really bothered me until until I think at some point it came to this sort of conclusion. Assuming that the rest of the system is now working at as high a level as, let's say, they can, and the last thing that's in the signal flow is hampering it. So let's say it's operating at 30% and everything else is at 80%. Then the end result is going to be obviously a significant compromise. And suddenly you remove that 30% and you put in a much better cable or whatever component it happens to be. Suddenly the floodgates open up and now you are at the system's uh, um, uh, capability as opposed to where it was before. And I suspect that might have been why these friends of mine used to love playing with cables because they had already gotten as far as they wanted to go with the rest of the stuff and now they were just playing with cables. So the most important rule that you should always remember about cables or the most important salient fact is that all cables attenuate. They hold something back. And the goal of every cable designer is to lessen or mitigate that fact. Um, If you look at Nordos, you'll see that they actually will list the propagation speed in terms of, you know, percentage of the speed of light. So the way that the electron or, you know, whatever the, the, the piece of packet is, as it travels across the conductor, that has an effect. The conductor actually is, is, is taking something away from that signal. So like you are saying, maybe that cable originally was 30%. It's only allowing 30% to get through and everything was 80%. That makes a huge difference. You're not getting as much information. Yeah. How do you measure that? That's uh, yeah. And to be clear, uh, um, I'm sure this is what Philip means. But at least this is what I mean. When I say thirty percent, I mean thirty percent of potential quality, not necessarily thirty percent of signal quality, a uh, signal uh, um, um, quantity. Um, but, but they're I, correlated, yeah, to I, a certain I, degree. All I can tell you is that when I connected that in, is it blew my mind. Um, the other thing that I've um, generally recommend is, again, assuming that you like a particular cable brand, uh, stay within that brand. Mixing and matching can oftentimes uh, lead to uh, a whole world of uh, craziness. Yeah, so in our systems, at least in the big system, it's it's all AQ, actually. We, we try to, yeah. If, we, if yeah. we switch out to, to Nordos, we'll use all Nordos. If we switch in AudioQuest for various reasons, we'll, we'll try and typically keep everything uh, in the same brand. Um, and then finally, um, the the actual protocol on how to actually change cables. In other words, not you know just plug and unplug, but what you have to be aware of. And and this is important because it can lead to otherwise potential damage. So um, if you're going to change interconnects, let's say for example between a preamp and an amplifier, always turn the amp off. Right. You can mute the preamp, uh, leave the volume control where it is, mute the preamp, but always turn the amp off. If you're changing the cable between uh, um, a DAC and the preamplifier, again, mute it if it's got a mute. Otherwise, turn the volume down, but make a note of where the volume setting was before you do that. Always do that. Otherwise, you, you can potentially uh, run into damage. And if you've got a subwoofer in the system, turn the sub off. Right. Do not leave the sub on. Otherwise, it can pop and give you a huge scare and potentially damage the sub as well. Um, The other thing to also note, some component manufacturers uh, require or highly recommend very specific cables. So things like name, manufacturers like name come to mind. Name has 
um, the way they design their amplifiers, they don't use inductors in the output stage, so they use the cable as the uh, as the inductor to stabilize the 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 um, output Zobel network, I guess is what they're called. Um, so if you're buying a name amplifier, um, they recommend a minimum of something like 3.5 meters of their specific kind of cable. Um, talk to the name dealer. Um, I was doing some, yeah, and, and according to the notes I saw, um, they recommend as much as 5 to 10 meters, but a minimum of 3.5 meter. And I remember way back, I, I guess it's still the case, if you were to buy a spectral amplifier brand new, um, you needed to make sure you had the spectral speaker cable. Otherwise, the warranty is void. I mean, they literally tell you the warranty is void. Um, so uh, the vast majority of electronics don't require that kind of thing. But just note that uh, name and spectral are two uh, unique circumstances. Um, then the other thing is that home loans can be ideal. So um, we in the store have a policy where we're happy to loan products out. However, um, uh, just be aware of this situation. Um, don't take advantage of the dealer. Don't uh, uh, borrow things you have no interest in. Don't borrow things because your friends are coming over for a hi-fi get-together. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're leading the uh, poor dealer by his nose and, 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 you know, so on. It's just not fair to the dealer. Um, um, I think most dealers are in the business truly out of passion and want to really help. Uh, so you want to build a trusted relationship together. Um, uh, so, uh, but absolutely, if you can and your dealer does have the cables, uh, ask to borrow the cables and, and try for the weekend and see what you think. Um, Philip, any thoughts about that? Oh, with uh, the home anything. loan program? Yeah, anything. So I have a story. Uh, one of our reps, he, he, he reps uh, audience cables. And he had some calls, and of course, since he's the 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 not, he's not a he's not a a retailer, he directed the traffic towards us, and he brought the cables in, and so I made the presentation to the potential new client, and um, essentially what happened is that they didn't buy the cable, they loved it, and then when I told them the price, it was oh, you're not going to give me some sort of super deal on this. And I said, well, you know, we have to make a little bit of money and you borrowed it and you really liked it. So you kind of knew what the price was. You know, how much do you want me? I can't recruit. I can't sell it to you for 50 percent off. You know, a cable costs more than that. And so um, that is not the ideal situation. Obviously, we we do definitely want to have uh, um, a scenario where we have a partnership with you know, any potential uh, purchaser of these kinds of products because it's a long-term kind of thing. Like you said, your client went through his system and added cable by cable by cable. And I've done the same thing. You know, I can afford this much, I buy this much, and I get a little bit of an improvement. And then I think about the next thing. And so these are the kinds of scenarios that we can help, um, you know, anybody who is passionate about um, pursuing this, this as a uh, something to bring joy into their lives and you know don't don't abuse it I guess just don't don't abuse it yeah we're very lucky the vast majority of our clients uh, I, I think are just amazing and yeah. we're so fortunate to to have them as clients um, I, I, I was just throwing that out so that uh, you may not have been aware of that type of scenario where um, uh, I know that some people think that, well, you know, I'm the client. You guys need to do this for me. And and the simple reality is that it should be a two-way street. It should be a win-win. If, uh, uh, if you want dealers to exist, if that's important to you, then you need to be able to support the dealers. Um, and vice versa, the dealer needs to support you. It cannot be a one-way street on either end. It has to do both. And we're very, again, we're very, very lucky that we have clients who love us, I think, and, and like us to be around and Equally, we're truly grateful. Client just texted me this morning just to poke at me. Hmm. He says, do you realize just in the one, this last year alone, I've given you $350,000? You know, and and I never take him for granted. In fact, uh, uh, yeah, was it yesterday or the day before? I left early to, to deliver by hand oh. a little box of accessories that he had bought. I, I could have mailed it, right? We, I, I could have easily shipped it and it would have gotten there the next day. But 
I, I, I drove two hours during rush hour to bring the box to him. One, because I wanted to see him, say hi, and so on. And number two, he's a great client. Why didn't you bring guy. him his amps? Right. Uh, well, it's coming soon. Okay. So, so uh, um, Brian, hi. <laughs> Brian, you know, those things are fixed, right? So they're just sitting there. <laughs> so anyway, uh, um, so uh, just so you know, um, we have incredible clients, absolutely incredible clients, and we're very, very fortunate. And uh, thank you yeah, guys for supporting Yeah, the loyalty is very yeah. touching. Thank you for supporting us. And greatly appreciate yeah. it. So anyway, uh, we need to wrap up. Uh, we're this already is way late. too long. Yeah, we're already See, late. Like, like a little kind of topic like this suddenly... You know, yeah, so when Philip first suggested this this video, I thought, well, we'll be done in like five minutes. What what, no. what good is this video? So like almost an hour later. Okay. Anyway, thank you for watching. Really appreciate the fact that you support us. Your support means a great deal to us. Um, and as always, the fact that you watch us and, and we get compensated uh, uh, through YouTube, the money goes to charity and we match it. So we thank you from the uh, bottom of our hearts. We thank you for that. And uh, now that uh, today's Friday, so it's the first day of stage three that yeah. Yes. Ontario is now allowed to have dine-in. Gyms will be open again. Haircuts, oh. see? Finally, haircuts. Yes, let's see. Yeah. So um, uh, if you're watching and you're local, uh, please join us. Come see us. But again, if at all possible, let us know you're coming, especially if you're planning to audition anything because we still need to have some control about traffic. And so please uh, let us know ahead of time. So all I can say is that you know, the regularly scheduled uh, program will come back uh, because we have we have things that are lined up. Oh, yeah. That we are gonna but a lot of topics we have to yeah. cover. Yeah. Um, so anyway, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.